So today I'm going to be talking about my Cobalt Electric lawnmower. It's my first battery powered lawnmower and I'll discuss everything from battery life to maintenance to how well it does and overgrown grass. Now I bought it from Lowe's in March 2018. It's the 80 volt model. This one has a 21 inch deck and a brushless motor and it was on sale for $450. I think the regular price was $500 because I'm pretty sure it was 10% off at the time. And included with the mower was a mulching plug, side discharge attachment, the bag for catching clippings, as well as a charger and two batteries. Now this one's not self-propelled. You can buy self-propelled models at a little extra cost, but I don't think they're that necessary. Overall, these are just lighter than gas mowers, so pushing them is so much easier, as well as turning, just any form of maneuvering. A couple of women in my family have used it and they love it, even though it's not self-propelled. So I'd say whether it's your mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa, they're probably not going to have a problem with it. I mean, uh, throwing this in the back of the truck compared to a regular mower is just nice. And electric, as you'd expect, is much quieter. I'd say it's about half the noise as my gas lawn mower. You can actually have a conversation with someone while the motor is running. You don't have to shut it off. Uh, it's still a mower. It is noisy, but nothing like gas. Now for the battery, your battery life of course will vary based on factors such as how tall your grass is and how wet the grass is. Uh, for me, I get on average about 45 minutes of use per battery. Uh, sometimes a little more and sometimes less if you haven't mowed in a while and the grass is thicker. Uh, luckily the battery charges in only about 30 minutes. That's because of this fast charger here. And you can see there's a little vent in the center of the charger. That's a fan that blows air into the battery so that it doesn't overheat while charging. And you can hear that fan right here, it's kind of loud. And if you have two batteries and it only takes 30 minutes to charge one, and you get at least that amount of time of mowing per battery, you can continue cycling through the batteries without ever running out. While one charges, you're mowing with the other one. Uh, once that one's empty, you switch them out and keep mowing. But if you're constantly switching them out, you're probably just better off with gas. Each battery has a power level indicator on the front. You hit the black button, three green lights means it's 75 to 100% fully charged. Two lights is 35 to 75% charged. And one means it's below 35%. And no lights means the battery is empty and it needs to be charged. Charging is easy, just slide the battery onto the charger. And if you did it correctly, you'll get a blinking green light and you'll hear the fan kick on as well. Then once it's charged, you'll have a solid green light. Now a big plus for an electric mower is how easy it is to start. You don't have a pull cord like you do with gas mowers, which uh, an elderly person especially would appreciate. Uh, to start it, all I have to do is press this big button on the front, and at the same time, pull the safety lever. And it's that simple. The motor is powerful enough for your average residential yard. It's programmed to run at two different speeds, which you don't have control over. You have the normal speed that will run at for regular cutting, but let's say you haven't mowed in a while or you run into some thick grass. There is a sensor that notices the extra resistance on the blade, and it will kick the motor into a higher speed to help cut through this thicker grass. Of course when this happens, you can expect a shorter battery life, and you can hear it when it switches to a higher speed. Here's a video clip of it doing just that. Maintenance, as you can imagine, is pretty much non-existent. No spark plug or carburetor like with gas. Since I bought this mower, I've not done a single bit of maintenance on it. And it operates exactly how it did when I first bought it. You can look in the user manual and there's practically nothing to do for it. There's a section for replacing the blade and another section telling you to wipe the mower clean after each use. And always remove the battery when doing anything other than mowing because you could accidentally jumpstart it. And a big drawback for the mower, you obviously can't expose this to water. It's all throughout the manual. It doesn't matter how light the rain is, I would not run it and risk ruining anything electrical with it. The battery goes in this little compartment on the front and you just push it in place until it clicks like that. And then removing the batteries just as easy, just push down on that blue tab and it comes right out. And once the battery runs out of power, the lawnmower will shut off and start beeping like in this clip. Don't worry though, the beeping stops as soon as you release the safety lever by the handle. I just continued holding it down for the video. As you can see, there are plenty of options for blade or cutting height. All you have to do is grab this lever and pull back to raise it, 
or bring it forward to lower the cutting height. The mower can be folded up for storage pretty quickly if you need to save some space. There's two knobs on the bar, one on each side. These are the same knobs to adjust the height of the handlebar. To fold the mower up, just pull the two knobs out of their slots and the handlebar folds over the mower and now it can be stood up. You're supposed to store the mower in a cool, dry place. I've always just put mine in the shed, which gets pretty hot, of course, during the summer, but I do store the batteries in a spare closet inside the house. So how does it handle a neglected yard? Well, I let the grass and weeds get out of hand for a good while, as you can see compared to the mower. Ideally, you'd want to start with a pretty high cutting height, but I set it low to see how the mower would do. Uh, you could feel resistance from too much grass being packed under the deck, so I try to avoid going over too much at one time. Uh, this one can get it done though, if you let your yard get in bad shape, but yeah, gas mower's power would be even better here. So now I'm going to lay out what I like about each mower based on my experiences from using gas mowers up until these last couple of years where I've switched to this electric cobalt mower. So pros for the electric mower is lightweight, the deck, motor, uh, even with the battery in it is so much lighter. The fact that it's not self-propelled isn't even an issue. Uh, my gas mower was self-propelled but the electric one is all around easier to mow with, especially when turning. It's also quiet by lawnmower standards, and I didn't realize how much quieter it was until I used my parents' mower at their house uh, a few months after owning this one. You can talk over it if you need to. I've never tried it, but you could probably get away with mowing it at 6 a.m. without upsetting the neighbors. It's easy to start mowing. You just slide the battery in, which is quicker than getting a gas can and filling it. Then you don't have to pull on a cord to start it. Uh, you only have to press the button and pull the handle back and it kicks on the first try and that thing's ready to go. Now for maintenance, you can't compare the two. Gas mowers need plenty of care. You need oil, uh, filters, spark plugs need to be replaced. The carburetor needs to be cleaned among other things. And for the electric one, there's basically nothing to do. I have done nothing for my electric mower since I bought it. I've only charged the batteries and I think I've taken a small broom and swept the deck once or twice. Uh, that's honestly it, and the thing cranks up every single time without issue. And one more thing that's a little nitpicky, but I figured I'd include it. You're not smelling any fumes when mowing. Pros for the gas mower, there's not as many, but they're very good pros to have. Uh, the most obvious is power. My electric does just fine, but the motors and gas lawn mowers are definitely more powerful and feel like they can take on anything and they can be used on wet lawns. Again, the power from the motor helps cut wet or damp grass pretty easily, and the gas mower can take a little rain. Uh, if you're mowing and the storm pops up, you can finish the yard without stopping, if it's not too heavy of rain, of course. Uh, there's no way I'd do that with the electric mower, not even if it was sprinkling. With all that being said, I'm not someone who's against gas mowers at all, but I will pick the electric mower every single time, unless it's raining. And at that point, I just wait for a drier day. I was going to link the Cobalt model that I bought from Lowe's, but it's completely out of stock, locally and online. I'm still going to link it below in the video description. I'm also going to leave an Amazon link to the Greenworks 80 volt equivalent, which is uh, in stock right now. And it's supposed to be just as good as the Cobalt. I actually think it's pretty much the same, just rebranded. Uh, anyways, I'm not the best with these videos, but I do hope some of you found it helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.